This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 95. In this episode, I will show you 30 new features in 11 different Google Apps. So make sure all your apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Before starting, let me show you the first wallpapers pack for this month, which includes these 12 stunning wallpapers, which are available right now in the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. You will find the Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to Google Apps. Let's start the episode with Google Photos as it got a lot of new exciting features. The first one is the ability to flip your photos and videos. So for example, when I tap on edit and then go to crop, you will see the new flip button. Tapping on it will flip your image like this. Google also added a whole new section for editing videos called presets. When you go inside, you will see multiple options to choose from. The first one is called basic cut. When you tap on it, you will see here, it says trimming to key moment. And after a while, it will try to enhance the video colors as well. So let's wait and see what's gonna happen. The first thing you will notice here is the video duration is now six seconds instead of 36 seconds like before. And when you tap on hold, you will see the difference in colors. You can edit whatever Google Photos did to your video by tapping on the same option again. And you will notice here that it only picked the last six seconds of the video, which is something you can change yourself and then tap on done. And here's the end result. It simply uses AI to pick the key moment in your video and then cut everything else. The second option is called slow motion, which will also enhance the video colors and convert your video into a slow motion. So let's take a look at the results. This time it only picked 11 seconds out of the 27 seconds and here's the difference in colors. And when you tap on edit, you will see one more slider added, which is responsible for the slow motion effect. You can make it longer or shorter and then tap on done. So let's hit the play button to show you how it looks. In my opinion, the quality is very low. And when I did the same on my S24 Ultra, it gave me much better results. So let me show you a quick side-by-side -side comparison. So on the left, I have the Pixel 8 Pro running Google Photos. And here I have the S24 Ultra. So let's hit the play button on both at the same time. And you will notice here that the slow motion effect on the S24 Ultra is much smoother, while on the Pixel, it's a bit laggy. So I definitely prefer it on the S24 Ultra. The main difference between the two is Samsung generates extra frames while creating a slow motion video to become smoother. While in Google Photos, it uses the original frame rate of the video, which in this case, it's only 30 frames per second, which is not good enough for a slow motion video. The third option we have under presets is called zoom. So let me show you what it does. It will automatically zoom in and out in a very smooth way, which I really like. And this is how it looks. And you still can do the same edits as I showed you earlier. And the last one we have is called track. And this one will follow the subject in the frame. So I tried to move in front of the camera to show you how it works. So it follows me wherever I go. And it looks really, really nice. This preset is my favorite for sure. But when you tap on edit, you don't have the ability to adjust the effect. You can only trim the video. And in some cases, if there is no specific subject in the frame, you will get this message at the bottom. It says track works best on videos with a single person that's farther away. The third feature I got is the new advanced search. This is not related to ask photos that Google announced in the IO event, but it's a little bit more advanced than the normal search. It says here, try describing what you want, say things like colorful sunsets or Alice and me laughing. So I gave it a couple of examples and it doesn't always work as expected. So for example, when I give it this command, it says here me wearing a Tommy t-shirt. It got a lot of correct results, but it also messed up a lot of them at the same time. So it doesn't always give you the accurate results you are hoping for. And sometimes it doesn't work at all, like in this case. And when I ask it for a plate number it starts with five, none of the pictures I got has the number five in it. So it doesn't always work as expected. And I'm eagerly waiting to check, ask photos and see how it works. And the last change, when I play a video recorded using Video Boost on the 8 Pro or the 9 Pro XL and then swipe up, I see this new export option. Tapping on it will allow you to export the video in HEVC or AVC formats. And when you hit export, it will show you a notification with the progress. And once done, you will find it in your gallery. The next app we have is YouTube Music. And here I'm gonna show you three new features. The first one is the new speed dial section that replaces listen again. 
This one has a grid of 3x3 three three in each page and it has multiple pages that you can scroll through but previously we used to have a two lines carousel and when you play anything from your speed dial either it's a playlist or a song you will see this white box around the item like this. The second change is YouTube music on the web now sync the queue from your phone. So for example, if you are playing music and this is your queue, once you open the website, you will find the same exact songs ready to play. But keep in mind, it's only one way sync from your phone to the web, but not the other way around. Now let's talk about Google Chrome and here I'm going to show you two new changes. The first one is related to the Android system web view, which is responsible for viewing web pages outside Google Chrome. Now you have the ability to access your Chrome history directly from the ellipses at the top right corner. The second change is in the desktop version. Now you can access circle to search by clicking on the address bar and you will find Google Lens chip at the very end. When you click on it, it will give you a floating selector so you can click and drag to select whatever you see on the screen. Once done, you will see the search results on the right side. In addition to the ability to add more keywords to your search to make it more relevant. And lastly, you can pin circle to search to your toolbar by clicking on the pin button. The next app we have is Google Messages and here I'm going to show you three new changes. The first one is the redesigned Gemini button. Now it's much smaller than before. The second change, when you open Gemini, you will see two new carousels with some suggestions to start your conversation. So for example, draft a message surprise party, would you rather, and so on and so forth. And lastly, the ability to edit text messages is finally here. So for example, when you send a message and then tap and hold on it, you will see an edit button at the top. Tapping on it will allow you to change it like this and hit the text sign and it will be recent. Keep in mind, you have only 15 minutes to edit your messages. The next app we have is Gemini, which got a new interesting change. Even if you are not a Google One subscriber, you still can access Gemini Live. So let me show you here when I switch to my free account, I still have the button which will allow me to chat with Gemini Live normally. I'm not sure if it's the same or not, but so far it works exactly the same as the paid version. But what's different here is the home page. This is the paid version and all it says is hello Imad. But when I switch to the free version, I have a carousel at the top. I have the recent section and then the text box. You will also notice that the buttons look different. Here I have a border around them. They are shifted to the side. The text box is embedded within the same container. And here I have a plus button that will allow me to upload a file, upload from gallery or upload from drive. But I don't have these options in the free version. Another feature Google pushed to advanced business and enterprise users is the ability to create your own gems. This feature will allow you to customize Gemini to create your own AI expert on any topic you want. So let me show you how it works. When you go to the profile menu, you will see a new item called Gem Manager. When you go inside, you will see some pre-created gems, one for brainstorming, one for career guide, coding partner, learning coach, and writing editor and the ones you create your own will be available under the Your Gems tab. And to create your own, you have to visit the website because it's not available in the app just yet. And when you tap on the link, it will take you to a page where you can see the editor. Here you can give your gem a name and give it the instructions to make it tailored to your own needs. And once done, you have the ability to preview it and it will automatically synchronize to your app. Google also updated the image generation model, which is called Imagine 3. This one should give you enhanced image quality, better text generation, lifelike visuals, and diverse styles. It's only available for advanced business and enterprise users. And I need more time to test these new changes and keep you updated in my future videos. Gemini also got new extensions. The first one is the Google Workspace, which includes Gmail, Calendar, Docs, Drive, Keep, and Tasks which will help you find, summarize, and get quick info from your content in these apps, in addition to the OpenStax extension. The next app we have is Google Maps, and it got some minor tweaks. The first one, when you tap on the search bar, now you can access all your saved locations directly from the carousel at the top, and we got this new blue dot next to the current location, which didn't exist before. On Android Auto, we got a quick shortcut to add a stop, which you can find over here. Then you tap on add a stop, 
scroll down and then choose your destination. Next, we have Google Wallet and there are a lot of new changes. Starting with Wear OS, now you have the ability to archive passes directly from your watch. When you tap on any of them and scroll all the way down, you will see the archive option. Tapping on it will move this pass to the archive, which you can also access on your watch by scrolling all the way down and you will see a new option here called archived passes. Tapping on it will show you the pass and when you scroll all the way down, you can unarchive it as well. On top of this, the grouped and unscannable passes will appear on your Wear OS. And if you have a group, when you tap on it, the passes will be available in a carousel to scroll through them, but I don't have any examples to show you. The wallet.google.com website is now available in 43 more countries, which will allow you to manage your Google Wallet on the web. And here's the list of countries if you want to check it yourself. And also Google Wallet is now available in 13 more countries as shown now on the screen. Lastly, the train tickets that appear in Gmail as confirmation emails will now show up in Google Wallet. This joins loyalty cards, movie tickets, and boarding passes. Now let's talk about the Pixel Buds and there are some new changes. The first one is the ability to set cleaning reminders for your headphones and the charging case. And I got this notification recently saying occasionally cleaning your Pixel Buds improves audio quality and the charging. Turn on quarterly notifications on this device to help you remember when and how to clean your buds. And if you want to access this feature, you need to go to your Pixel Buds settings and then go to more settings and then notifications. And you will see a new toggle over here called the clean your buds reminder. And this article will allow you to learn how you can clean it without damaging the internals. The second change is the ability to access Gemini and Gemini Live from your Pixel Buds. And here is how it works. When you tap and hold on the bud, it will start the normal Gemini. But if you want to access Gemini Live, you need to say, let's talk live. And this is how it works. And the last change, when you go to your Pixel Buds settings and then digital assistant, you will see a new option here called only require one unlock. Unlock your connected device while wearing your AirPods or headphones, then talk to your digital assistant without unlocking again. Resets if you remove your AirPods or headphones. So if you want to activate this feature, you have a toggle inside. Now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change. The first one is the Google app. And now you have the ability to add the song search tile to your quick settings. And once you tap on it, it will immediately start the hum to search feature. Next, the live captions window got a complete revamp. So let me show you a quick example. When I activate the captions, you will notice here that the window now has more rounded corners with the ability to resize it to make it as big as the entire screen like this or as small as a couple of lines, then all other settings are now located in a separate container that floats underneath the main one. From here, you can add more languages, you can change the style or tap the ellipsis to activate the translate captions option. And lastly, the Google menu under your Android settings got the material you redesign. The two tabs at the top are now separated in their own rounded rectangles. You can see more information about your backup and you can manage it from here as well. When you go to all services, each section now has its own container with a header at the top instead of having a list of options stacking on top of each other. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please reach me out on social media if you spotted any new change to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.